Thank you. <clears throat> Your Highness, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is such a pleasure to be here in Stockholm and to be part of this important initiative. The Food Forever Initiative primary objective is to raise awareness of the importance and urgency of conserving and using actual biodiversity and to advocate for concrete actions and ideas to support the implementation of SDG Target 2.5. I would like at the outset to extend my sincere and deep appreciation to Dr. Gunhild Stordalen and Professor Johan Rockström for their kind invitation and for the warm hospitality shown to me and to my delegation since our arrival in this magnificent city of Stockholm. I would also like to acknowledge the contribution and commitment of Dr. Marie Haga and her staff to this noble cause. Ladies and gentlemen, in September 2015, as part of its agenda for the next 15 years, the UN adopted a set of sustainable development goals. They are the most sweeping, ambitious program ever undertaken by a global organization. SDG 2 targets to put an end to hunger and to achieve food security. Target 2.5 goes further and points to a very important issue that by 2020, the genetic diversity of seeds, cultivated plants, farmed and domesticated animals, and their related wild species, including through soundly managed and diversified seed and plant banks at national, regional, and international levels, and ensure access to and fair resources and associated traditional knowledge as internationally agreed. Ladies and gentlemen, Food is culture. Food preferences are an integral part of cultural identity. In short, food is who we are. Three times a day for the fortunate few in a world where 800 million people go to bed hungry every day. Food security rests on plant diversity, both wild and cultivated. It is the result of years of selection of crop varieties. It is a critical resource not only to address sustainable agriculture, but for all of our ecosystemic needs. Increasing the sustainable use of agricultural biodiversity in production consumption systems will be an important part of the solution to the challenge of meeting food, future food and nutritious, nutrition security. Yet. We are pushing nature's life support systems very far, and they are struggling to cope with our relentless demand. If we do not work with nature's system, nature will fail to be the durable, continuously sustaining force that she has ever been. It is only by safeguarding nature's resilience that we can hope to have a resilient form of food production and ensure food security in the long term. In 2005, the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment identified five major direct drivers of biodiversity loss and ecosystem services changes. They include habitat change, climate change, invasive alien species, overexploitation, and pollution. Unfortunately, the loss of crop genetic resources is already happening and may lead to the loss of options for improving agriculture. Whilst agriculture and food production are complex, they operate together to deliver those increased yields to meet society's multiple needs. So the question we need to ask ourselves is this. Are we creating a more sustainable approach to agriculture that is recognizing the social and economic parameters which are likely to impact feeding the world with a global population rapidly heading for 9 billion? There is, this is a growing problem at the global scale as yields for stable food crops are declining and they have dropped from 3% in 1960s to 1% today and for the first time that rate is less than the rate of population growth. The world must find the means of feeding over 200,000 new mouths every day. This situation, I fear, will only become more volatile as we suffer yet more natural disasters. With an estimated one billion people, one-seventh of the world population to feed, there is also another billion suffering from hidden hunger. It was comforting, however, to note that the 2016 World Food Prize went to those scientists who developed and implemented, through biofortification and breeding, critical vitamins and micronutrients into stable crops, thereby dramatically reducing hidden hunger for millions. 
but how do we ensure a sustainable food production system? For me, it must be a form of agriculture that does not exceed the carrying capacity of its local ecosystem. It is a form of agriculture that is inclusive of the diversity of crops, and diversity is what provides resilience in farming systems. One local wheat variety collected in Turkey in 1948, initially of little interest, as it was tall and thin stem and susceptible leaf to leaf rust and cold weather, was later found to be resistant to several other pathogens, including stripe rust. When stripe rust became a problem in the northwest of the United States, this little known variety was utilized in major wheat breeding programs. The genetic diversity in land races used in traditional agricultural production systems constitutes an important element for the livelihood strategies of farmers and confers resilience to agricultural production systems. It is important for us to ensure that this diversity is maintained in such production system for evolutionary adaptation to environmental changes. This brings us to another important point. How do we bring the neglected and underutilized plant species, NUS, into the mainstream? They are also known to play an important role in food security, nutrition, health, income generation, and cultural practices. Underutilized plant species are also cultivated and used, drawing on indigenous local knowledge. They are not well represented in, in ex situ gene banks and are characterized by poor or inexistent local seed supply system, which renders them inaccessible. NUS, unfortunately, represent less than 20% of all the accessions held in germplasm collections and also at risk of cultural and genetic erosion. Conserving these species is not conservation for conservation's sake. It is conservation for today, tomorrow, and for the next decades. As we have closed the International Year of the Pulses, the humble lentil is one such good example. The pioneering work of Professor Van den Berg, who is reported to be the godfather of lentil breeding, must be commended in as much as he managed to bring the traits of the tough wild relatives growing in the center of origin, the Middle East, into those of cultivated lentils. The results have been staggering for Canada. The country is now the leading exporter in this commodity, whereas lentils hardly grew there in 1970s, and ensuring food security for millions of people across the world. Where are we in Mauritius? A small country, but part of a biodiversity hotspot. Mauritius forms part of the SADC Plant Genetic Resource Program and has established a national gene bank to conserve plant genetic resources. It currently holds 517 accessions. A duplicate of this entire collection is now housed at the SADC Regional Base in Zambia. This approach is extremely important to avoid any risk of losing that collection. Why not have a third collection st stored at the Svalbard? Mauritius is also conducting, concluding an EU ACP project led, to biodiversity, led by Biodiversity International with a view to ensure the conservation of genetic resources of crop, crop while relatives native to the country and develop a national strategy action plan for their conservation and use. This project is allowing Mauritius to identify and collect priority CWR that are missing from ex situ collection before they disappear in the wild and also to conserve them in situ. Ladies and gentlemen, agrobiodiversity target 2.5 in the UN SDG is ambitious, but the global community has committed to safeguarding existing biodiversity by 2020. The proposed indicators to monitor progress in the achievement of the target 2.5 rightly focus on the efforts to conserve genetic diversity in ex situ facilities and reducing the risk of local breeds as they are easy to measure. However, there is also a need to ensure that the diversity is maintained in situ. This is an area where there's a call for the expansion and development of a form of agrobiodiversity index that encompasses different aspects of conservation and use linked to our food systems, hence a complementary approach to both ex situ and in situ conservation strategies. The Food Forever initiative is a campaign meant to help the global community implement this global decision. Forever, Food Forever wants to tell the world's decision makers how fundamentally important agrobiodiversity is for humankind, whether these decision makers come from government, private sector, or civil societies. We are gathering a group of champions and partner organizations to raise awareness and stimulate actions. 
We are calling for action for a long-term cause that is attainable. We are embarking on, is not scientifically di difficult, it is not politically controversial, and can be done with remarkably little money. It can be done over the next few years, otherwise it will be too late. So Food Forever is a platform to all those who are passionate, as I am, about the sustainability and resilience of our food systems. If we are serious about feeding a growing world population with sufficient nutrition food in times of climate change, we have no other choice but to build on the biodiversity that nature and earlier generations has given to us. Food Forever is still young and will evolve gradually, hopefully ending up as a major movement. We are grateful to be able to launch this initiative here at the EAT Stockholm Food Forum. We are looking forward to future cooperation with EAT as well as many other partners in this room. We invite you all to join us. The more diverse the partners, the more impact we will have. For change to happen, we must act as one. From the farmers growing diverse crops, to the breeders using diversity to develop resilient crops, to the retailers providing more options on their shelves, to the consumers demanding more diverse, nutritious, and sustainable foods. By joining Food Forever, you will contribute to securing the basis for food and nutrition security of all future generations. The time for action is now. I thank you for your attention.